Praise God, praise God, praise God. Good evening, good evening, good evening. For those of us that are in the house of OIC, we just thank y'all for being here. And those that are watching via live stream on Facebook or YouTube, we just thank y'all for joining us yet again for Wednesday night picker up as our man of God likes to say. Without further ado, we want to do our 91st song. First song says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of violence and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come by thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come out of thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall not trample on their feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore would I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. The next voice you hear is our, the man of God this house, Pastor John Southfield. pray that you've had a blessed day and a blessed uh, evening. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. God, for this opportunity you have given unto us, God. You have woken us up this morning, started us on our way. You have given us the activities of our limbs. And Father, we just want to take time to say thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves, God. God, we realize without you, we would be men most miserable, oh, God. But because of you, oh, God, we can face tomorrow. Because of you, God, we can face every challenge that we come across, oh, God, with confidence that you are yet with us, oh, God. God, I thank you for this gathering tonight. Father, I pray that yokes are destroyed, burdens are removed, God. People's bodies are healed, delivered, and made free in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you that every need is met. There's nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken, Father God, because you're that kind of God. And Father, I thank you that you care so much about us, oh God, that you know the number of hair that's on our heads, Father, and we give you glory and honor. Father, tonight, as we break open the word of God, Father, saturate our mind, our heart, our spirit, man. Fill us up, O oh God, and let there be an overflow in our lives. And we'd be so careful tonight, oh God, to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Put your hands together. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Somebody know that? Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. I hear the joy bells. Joy bells. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. One more time. Come on, y'all. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. I 
hear the joy bells, joy bells, joy bells keep ringing in my soul. All right, praise the Lord. Amen. Do you have your Bibles? Grab your word. Come on. Let's get in the word of God since you don't know my song. Come on. <laughs> you don't know my song. We got to keep moving. My Lord. Amen. We thank God. We pray for Pastor Pat. Amen. She had a mind to be here. Amen. Amen. Well, let's just have our seat for the time being, and then we'll get into the word. Praise God. I pray that you came with your pads, your pens, and this Bible study quiz time. Amen. So let's see. Uh, it, it's, it's review. Let's call it Bible uh, study review. Amen. And see what you picked up on Sunday's message. We thank God for all that were watching, who are watching live stream, who are yet praying for us, supporting us. We thank God for you. Amen. Testimonies are rolling in left and right. Breakthrough is happening. Uh, miracles are coming forth. Amen. If I were you, I wouldn't want to be left behind. Hallelujah. Let me get mine while the water is troubled. Amen. All right. Are you ready for our Bible study review? Yes. Ready. All right. From Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Well, here's the number one. We got to go. All right. Fill in the blank. Worldly sorrow worketh blank. All right. The first question on our Bible study review or quiz. Fill in the blank. Worldly sorrow worketh blank. All right. If you were here Sunday, you heard, you heard what that worketh. All right. There's that music. All right. That's enough. All right. Anybody respond online? Amen. Come on online. We got to hear from you. Amen. All right, let's go ahead regret. with it. We got regret online. All right, we got regret. All right, let me read it again. Fill in the blank. Worldly sorrow worketh blank. What is it? Regret. Death. 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 Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> Worldly sorrow worketh death. All right, we're going to get that scripture in a minute. Uh, Question number two. What was the main scripture of Sunday's message? What was the main scripture? Oh, I know y'all are good note takers. Let's get some music. What was the main scripture to Sunday's message? All right. Anybody online? All right. What do we have here? 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. Anybody have anything different? All right, good. Everybody's at the top of the class tonight. All right. I was going to make a lead way if somebody had Psalm 51 and 17. The whole Psalm 51. Yeah, all right. If you had that, you're still at the top of the class. All right. Question number three. We rolling. True or false? Brokenness must precede repentance. Brokenness must precede repentance. True or false? <coughs> All right, let's go with it. All right, true or false? Brokenness must precede Repentance, true or false? True. 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 Everybody got true? Yes, sir. true. Yeah. All right. Everybody trying to make a hundred tonight. <laughs> All right. Number four. Who sold his birthright for one morsel of meal? Who sold his birthright for one morsel of meal that we explain Sunday? Amen. We got to cut the time in half because this is so easy. Amen. All right. Anybody online? 
Nobody online. Come on, online. Oh, Amen. Stay with, stay with Esau. Esau. All right. Who sold his birthright for one morsel of meal? Anybody Esau. have what? Esau. Anything other than Esau. I is wrong. <laughs> Esau is the one. <laughs> All right. Number five. Y'all are good. That must be easy. Lord. All right. Name the chapter. Well, let's start with the book of the Bible and the chapter that truly illustrates brokenness and true repentance. What book of the Bible uh, that we talked about Sunday and what chapter that illustrates brokenness, true brokenness, and true repentance? We talked about it Sunday. That's good. Any, anybody all right? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's not right. <laughs> all right, anybody else? All right, name the book of the Bible and what chapter that truly illustrates brokenness and repentance. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. All right, everybody have Psalm 51? Yes, we did. All right, all right, we got one. <laughs> All right, number six. Y'all are doing really well. Who said these words to King David? Who said these words to King David? Thou art the man. A, uh, somebody said this to King David. That relates to... I'm not telling you. <laughs> Go ahead, let us know. <laughs> Who said these words to King David? Thou art the man. We explained it Sunday. Anybody online? Shayla said Nathan. Prophet Nathan. Anybody have anything other? No. All right. That was real easy. All right. I got to get harder questions. <laughs> All right. Doing really well. All right. Number seven. We're moving. <laughs> True or false? Worldly sorrow cannot produce repentance. True or false? Worldly sorrow cannot produce repentance. True or false? We talked about it Sunday. All right, let's go. True or false? Worldly sorrow cannot produce repentance. Your answer? All right, all right. All right, number eight, let's keep moving. What does surrender mean? Number eight, what does surrender mean? We had it up on the board Sunday. Or what does it involve? Surrender. What does surrender involve? All right, that's good. Anybody online? All right. Shayla said death. You said it's death. No. All right. Anybody have, what do you have? Relinquishing control. Yes. Does anybody have relinquishing control of our lives to God? Yep, I have that exactly. That, that's <laughs> surrender. Relinquishing control of our lives. That's surrender to God. All right, that was the first hard one. I done lost a couple people. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, where can I find this scripture? If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Where can I find this scripture? If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. We talked about that scripture. Sunday. All right, we got to move. All right, who has the scripture? Anybody online? Mm, no. All right, what scripture do y'all have? I'm hearing something, but I can't hear. John 8 and what? John? John is right. What? what? 44? Huh? Uh -oh. 8 and 36. 
I thought I heard. Did somebody say that over there? Yeah, she was. She wanted. I was. You wanted to hear it. You wanted to hear it. He was scared to repeat it. Yeah, Saint John eight and thirty six. If the if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Here's our last and bonus one. If you get this one, you get to pass the class. <laughs> Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus, is an example of what kind of sorrow? We know Judas is the one who betrayed Jesus. And it, what kind of example, what kind of sorrow that we explain Sunday? It is an example of what kind of sorrow? All right, we got to move, Pastor Robert. All right. Anybody online have it? No. All right, what do y'all have? Worldly. Worldly. All right. <laughs> Everybody pass empty. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, open your Bibles. Open your Bibles, if you would. Amen. To Matthew's, the 26th chapter. Amen. I mean, yes, the 26th chapter. We're going to read verses 36 through 39. Amen. I pray that you did bring your word. It reads as this, as thus. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Verse 37, he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Father, I pray that you will open our hearts to receive your word with clarity and understanding. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to read also Matthew, our base scripture on the series that we are in, uh, into the beauty of brokenness. Uh, Matthew 21 and 44. It talks about, and whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be what? Broken. Broken. But whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. In our main scripture from Sunday morning, 2 Corinthians 7 and 10 says, For godly sorrow, you got to catch this, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But listen to this. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Amen. And our subject from Sunday was brokenness that leads to repentance. Amen. Uh, we also explained Sunday that without brokenness, there can be no true repentance. Amen. And when we're talking about brokenness, it is learning to and willing to fall upon the stone. And who is that stone? Jesus Christ is that stone. Amen. And no one, listen, no one can take your place. You and I have to be willing to get to a point of brokenness so that we can get to a place of repentance. Amen. Some people are trying to come in the church and get busy. They serve and they work in, and they miss the first base. They never asked Christ to come in to their lives. And so they got to find a place of brokenness so that they can get to a place called repentance. Amen. Uh, brokenness is where we lay down our old lives, the, the old you. 
Amen. It, it has to die. The things we used to do, we got to let that go. The places we used to go are broken to pieces spiritually. Amen. When we get to brokenness, we are saying, God, I'm turning my back on the things I used to do, the places I used to go, the people, some of the people I have been connected to. God, I lay it down so that I can pick up you, so that you and I can I can be in relationship with you. That's brokenness. Uh, and sometimes, listen, listen. We, we, it's a struggle there. It's a struggle because our flesh wants to do what it has been used to doing. And we have to constantly stay before God, stay on the altar. God, help me to remain broken before you so that I can learn how to walk in the newness of life and experience uh, eventually eternal life. Anybody here is excited about eternal life? Amen. This is why we come to church. This is one of the reasons why we uh, do what, uh, doing what we're doing because we're looking past where we are and looking to our future, which is to spend eternity with God. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So when we yield ourselves to the influence and uh, the convicting power of the Holy Ghost, it is working on the inside. Man can't see what the Holy Ghost is doing on the inside. It is a convicting power. We're under, we come under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Has anybody ever experienced coming under the convicting power of the Holy Ghost in your life? Amen. He brings to us, he illuminates our mind, he, he opens our eyes to spiritual things, things concerning God's will for our lives. And we have to be willing and obedient to obey what he has shown us. And many times when God shines the light of his word on our lives, we begin to see what a mess we really are. We begin to see how we don't really measure up to God's standard of living. And we can't do it in and of the flesh. We need God's help to live a holy and broken life before him. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. And so tonight, my, my topic, we, we're talking about, have you reached your breaking point? Come on. Have you reached your breaking point? Amen. Because the Holy Ghost uh, is the only one who can cause our spirit, man. We found out we are made of a, a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. And when we ask Christ to come in, our spirit, man, is saved instantly. All right, but here come the struggles when uh, our soul, which is saved progressively, and, and, and we live in this body, we got to get that soulless man under control. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Amen. And when we begin to put on righteousness and put on uh, the armor of God and uh, what the Bible tells us to put on and to take off, we're teaching our soulless man, my spirit is going to be in control of my life. Hallelujah. And, and some, for some people, that's, it, it, it seems like it's easier for some than for others. Some, uh, some people got the travail as like a woman having a, a given birth. They have to moan and groan because uh, whatever they were into does not want to let go of the grip of sin in their lives. But see, when, when you think about the process the process is painful, but it's working in us eternal life. How many would rather suffer now than suffer later? Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all might be so tight. If your neighbor sleep, just give him a Holy Ghost slap <laughs> with love. <laughs> Amen. We would rather suffer now and go through what we have to just as long as we're, our names is written in the Lamb's book of life. Is anybody here to get happy tonight? <laughs> All right. Want to know, have you reached your breaking point? 
All right, so you got to catch this. We have explained this in uh, a couple of the Bible studies. The process of brokenness begins with submission. Ah, the process of brokenness begins with submission. Well, Pastor, what does it mean? Why do I need to submit? Because you got to be willing. Submit means to come under, to go under. To, uh, that means need. Amen. And mission is I want to get in alignment with whatever God is doing. So we got to get in alignment, come underneath, submit ourselves. The Bible says if we submit ourselves, resist the devil, and what will the devil do? Flee. Come on, people know that. Come on, y'all. Amen. And so submission, listen to this, is the master key that unlocks every door in the kingdom of God. Oh I've got a couple of folks get happy tonight. All right? Submission is the, the master key huh, that unlocks every door in the kingdom of God. You know why that's important? Because we're kingdom children. We're kingdom sons and daughters, and we must learn how to operate in our king's domain. And if the king is requiring us to submit, that's what we must do. Submit to the authority of our king, which is Christ Jesus. Amen. And sometimes those of us who consider ourselves to have strong wills, uh, uh, what makes us to have strong wills? Because we've been doing things and we know how to control. We know how to manipulate people and, and tell them off and do this and that. But when you come in God's kingdom, you can't have it your way. Come on, come on. Yeah. Now you got to answer to the king and you got to submit to his authority. And when he says bow down, guess what you got to do? Bow down. Come on, somebody. But here in the flesh, the flesh says, oh, uh, uh, no. We don't do that. But if you're going to operate according to the principles of the kingdom, you have to learn how to submit yourself. How many people have left the church because they did not want to submit to authority? Oh, uh, yes, I'm meddling. People left the church because they did not want to humble them, humble themselves and learn what it means to submit themselves and get back to the place of repentance. You know, what happens, you know, the thing that is behind failing to submit is pride. Pride is a solid killer. It's in the church. Ask Brother Lucifer. Yeah, he was the man until pride got hold of his life. Then he found out real quick, man, I messed up. I should have let pride go and kept myself in, in heaven because what happened when I let pride set in, I got he got kicked out. And not only did he get kicked out, how many in heaven? A third of the angels that went on, yeah, come on, we with you. Y'all need to go with him. <laughs> and that's why you never want to get hold of pride to let pride keep you from submitting to the will and authority of God Almighty. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I came to tell somebody no submission, no brokenness. Yes. Now the question again, have you, this is a personal question, have you reached your breaking point? Amen. To get in line with what God is doing or what God wants to get done. Amen. Supporting uh, what God wants. Amen. And God, God would never place us in a, uh, he will place us, but we got to ask God, God, I'm I, I come short. I, I'm short, God. I need help, Father. I need your grace, your mercy, God, to help me to conform to your will. And I can tell you, when you begin to ask God, he will give it to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because remember I said Sunday, the way uh, Jesus gets here is on earth is through you and I. Amen. And so well, somebody in the body of Christ has to be willing to say, God, not my will, but thy 
thy will be done. Have you reached the breaking point? Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. And this is where the regrets, there's no regrets. That's where that word come in. Amen. There's no regretting when you give your life to Christ. How many in here today? Oh, I, I don't I didn't I didn't really want to be saved. Uh -oh. I regret even as the Lord. No. Uh -oh. When you give your life to Christ, you ought to be glad about it. Amen. Worldly sorrow worketh death because it never takes, goes to the next step of repentance. It stops right there. And so when we look at worldly sorrow, they regret the sin they've done, but they don't ask for forgiveness. How many times when we mess up even as a believer, we, got, we find ourselves repenting. God, I messed up. God, I made a bad decision. I made a bad choice. And God, I'm repenting before you. David had to learn that. He was a king. The Bible says, uh, uh, when uh, God was talking to him, says, if you would have asked for anything, I would have given it unto you. Why did you go and have somebody killed when you could have had whatever you asked for? So no matter how saved we are, we do still find ourselves, God, I need to repent. When you get to a place where you think you never have to repent, you need to get back to brokenness. We have never arrived. As long as we're in this earth suit, we need to stay broken before God. So what is repentance, Pastor John? Well, the Greek word for repentance is metanoia. Metanoia. Metanoia means changing the mind. When you come to give Christ your life you, and you're repenting, the Holy Spirit is working on the inside to bring you to a place of changing, renewing your mind. Y'all remember that scripture, Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, uh, but be ye what? Transform. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right, so repentance uh, means changing the mind. Change directions. You don't want to do a 360. You want to do a 180 because what happens when you do a, a 360? You go right back to where you started. So if you do a 180, you're facing a new direction. That's what repentance, changing the mind, changing my life's direction. We were headed for hell. Now we're headed for heaven. And we got to learn heaven's way to heaven. We used to say, and say, there's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. Y'all heard that before? Uh -huh. All right, a couple folks. <laughs> Amen. Y'all don't know my songs. Was I in the church by myself? Yeah. <laughs> Way back in the day. <laughs> Praise God. Tonight we're talking about have you reached your breaking point? I believe God has us on this series as he did with walking in the newness of life because he sees there are uh, many of us that needs to get back to brokenness. We have gotten somewhat complacent. We have got somewhat uh, off track. And God says, I need the body of Christ to get back to being broken. Amen. Because when we are broken, which leads us to submission, we won't have all these isms and schisms in the body of Christ. Amen. You won't have preachers, you won't have preachers trying to manipulate the, the flock, the sheep, and doing all sorts of, of crazy things in the church over the in the name of the Lord. Amen. And when that happens, he's not broken. She's not broken. And they're operating out of the flesh rim trying to do spiritual things. And it's like trying to get Judas and Esau uh, in the pulpit on a Sunday. And they don't have, they don't know what it is to repent. They refuse to do it God's way. And God says, God says, now is the time. The urgency of now is is to find ourselves submitting to the authority of the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost to show me my flaws, to show me where I need to rise up and meet the standards. I'm not trying to bring God's standard down to my level. Amen. 
No, because the king doesn't come down to us. We got to raise our level of living. And that comes and starts with true brokenness. Are y'all getting this tonight? Yeah. Amen. I pray that in, in the midst of our changing direction, changing our, our mind, God begins us to teach us a new way of living. And it's a good way. It's a good way of living. He begins to say, no, you don't need that. Separate yourself from that. And when we learn how to be willing and obedient, we'll, we'll experience the fruit of submission. The fruit of submission is holiness. Did y'all catch that? When we learn how to walk in brokenness and submission, we'll begin to experience the true fruit of submission, which is God's holiness. And the Bible says, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Somebody said, Lord, change me. Lord, change me. Oh, my God. So uh, it is, listen, I know many of us can testify. Have you ever had the Holy Spirit working in you and he, he's prompted you to do something, go somewhere or say something to somebody. And the first thing we did, I ain't doing that. Anybody? Yes, yes, yes. All right, oh, I'm glad I got some witnesses. Ooh, we can ready to break this down. Amen. But you didn't want to do it. We did, we allow excuses. What if, what if we let fear just plain out disobedience and unwilling to submit. Amen. Why is that, Pastor John, when we call ourselves a born-again believer? Because, listen to this, our flesh does not automatically want to do the things of God. Did you catch that? You can't forget that. Why are you struggling in this area? Your flesh does not want to give up control of your soul. And now, now there's a spiritual battle going on. Now, now listen, if there's no spiritual battle going on in your soul, you haven't reached brokenness yet. You're still leaning too far to one side. And God says, the devil, listen, God, he, he, he told us in his word, we have to stay before him, stay in prayer, stay fasting. These are the things we need to do to reach the place of brokenness. And submitting unto God because God knew, Jesus Christ knew that the struggle is not in our spirit, man. The struggle is in our flesh. And our flesh has to learn. We have to teach our flesh how to submit to the authority of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Our mind and our will does not want to submit. And that word submit to come under the mission of what God wants to do in our lives. And uh, there's a scripture that says the spirit is willing, willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. The flesh is weak. Amen. Because God is calling the body of Christ, every born again believer, to crucify the flesh. And it goes on and says, mortify, put to death the deeds of the flesh, and yield your members, your lives, your bodies to total surrender to the will of God. And that comes from us willing and, and obedient to falling upon the stone. Amen. To be broken by the Holy Ghost. And when we fall upon the stone, we're getting to a place of brokenness in our lives where we be able to say, not my will, oh God, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Amen. Because sometimes there is a constant conflict or struggle going on with our will aligning up with God's will. Amen. And, you know, it even happens. Even You can say I've been in church 20, 25 years. When God shows, see, many times when God gives us an assignment, you got to catch this. It is most always outside of your physical ability. And when he gives us an assignment, we begin to look at 
I can't do this in the, uh, I'm limited. But God is not looking at your limitations. He's looking at his power working through you and producing fruit. I came to tell somebody tonight, you and I, if we're staying connected to the vine, you and I are fruit producers. Amen. That every, if you're calling yourself a born again believer, you are uh, giving your life to Christ. You, your life ought to be producing some kind of fruit. Amen. And so, when God gives us assignment, when God gives us uh, something to do in the kingdom, uh, He's not looking for you to accomplish in your flesh. He's looking for you to pull on His grace to get it done. Y'all remember Jonah? Mm -hmm. Jonah was given a specific assignment. Get you to Nineveh. Preach the gospel. Jonah's had an a, a attitude problem with the people. He was going to try to do what he wanted to do and not what God had commissioned him to do. And if you read the story, he ended up in a fish's belly. And, oh, uh, man, he had some issues. Can I tell you, when we disobey God and try to do what God wants in our own flesh, we're going to run into some brick walls. And God has to get us back to brokenness until we say, yes, Lord, not my will. Now, God, I got it now. And he went and did what God called him to do. Sometimes when our will does not want to line up, God will get us to a place where there's nowhere to go but on our knees. God, I'm sorry. I messed up, oh God. And, you know, we, we talk about this sometimes, even in the church, when people get saved in jail. I believe in jailhouse salvation because you want to know why? Say why, Pastor. Why? <laughs> because some people's life is so messed up, they don't take time to stop and try to figure out, I've been going and keep running to that same brick wall. You think eventually they will figure it out. How in a man, how in the world a man get out of jail, try, and they give him another opportunity, and before he can get a, a month out of jail, he back in jail. He's not learning how to be broken. I, when I was working at the prison, I looked at see men, you just was released last week. What you doing back? Yeah, I done messed up again. I was like, you should have learned. They give you nothing but time in the prisons to think about where you were headed. Why would you take that time, think about where you were headed, and when they release you, you go right back to what they were giving you another chance to correct. That happens in the church as well. God has said, I'm trying to get you to point Z, and you keep going around that same mountain. God says, you're going to have to let this people go. These people, you got to let these things. You got to get broken so that you can move from around this mountain. It's not about coming to church shouting, how, how, did y'all shout today? No, did you get broken today? Oh, how many, how many people y'all got? No, how many saved folks we got? You got pastors, they worried about the numbers and nobody's sanctified, nobody's broken. Why would we have the whole town of Elgin come to the church and nobody getting delivered? Nobody getting broken before God. Nobody understands what repentance is. That's what it, the message, the gospel message is about repenting before God. Never, saints, listen, never get to a place where you fail to ask God to forgive you of your sin. You don't know, sometimes we can go about our day and say something and not really mean to hurt nobody, but we offend them by something we said or done. And you don't find out till a week or two later, you remember that day you said this, you offended me. But you were in the church shouting, going on, and you said something that hurt somebody's feelings. So that's why you got to say, God, I just want to cover every angle, every step, every base I take by asking, God, if I committed any sin, if I've done anything to anybody, if I said something that wasn't right, God, I repent before you now. So you're saying, well, uh, 
Well, Pastor, what do we do when we find our spirit, our soul struggling in the flesh with different things that we're confronted with? When it seems like we keep trying to get it right. We keep struggling. You, the answer, listen to this. What do you do when there's a struggle going on on the inside? We begin to do what the same thing that Jesus did. When Jesus knew he had to take the weight of the world, the sins of the world upon his shoulders, what did he do? He found a place of prayer. He found a place of prayer. He found himself in a place called Gethsemane. Write that down. You got the notice now. He got himself, he come to a place called Gethsemane, metaphorically uh, figurative. You, we're not speaking for you to get in a car and go find a town called Gethsemane. No, uh, when it represents, see, that word Gethsemane, uh, it means get, the G-E-T-H. It's the oil press or a place of pressure. Y'all getting this? All right, you got to get it. Amen. The oil press or a place of pressure. A simony, uh, it means liquid oil or oil. All right? And, and it's from the English word where we derive semen, the male's reproductive power. Amen. So Jesus knew what he had to face and the price he had to pay to redeem mankind. He knew that he had to take the sins of the world upon his shoulder. He knew that he was eventually going to be separated from his father. Uh, his humanity, listen, his humanity was wrestling in the flesh. He was wrestling, but his divinity says, God, I understand it's not my will, but it's your will. And there, there was a struggle going on, and he had to get to a place uh, and Gethsemane, amen, to experience brokenness. Now, can I tell you this? If Jesus had to get to a place in Gethsemane to experience brokenness, how much more do you think we need to get to? Amen. Hey, amen. I'm praying that this week, there's some time between when we let out of church and Saturday night, Sunday morning, you will have an experience in Gethsemane. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, God, God has told us some things that we, have, we are facing in our life. You're going to have to fast and pray. Because it seems like you pray, you cry, you pray, and that thing is staying right there. God says, no, you need to get to a place of in Gethsemane so that thing can be broken. Come on, somebody. It has to be broken. Can I tell you this? There's no thing on this earth, there's no sin on this earth where the power of God cannot break the control. I don't care what addiction, I don't care what it is. The power of God is able to break every addiction. It's the, it's the power to break everything that is trying to stay in control of our lives. Somebody say amen. amen. Have you reached your breaking point? Your breaking point. The place where it's like, I can't, I can't go another day in this situation. I, I don't want to go another day wrestling with this issue. I don't want to. No, 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 no. I'm so sold out for God. I'm willing to get on the altar. I'm willing to be broken before God. I want, listen, because the kind of mindset the Holy Ghost wants us to have is like, God, whatever, when you speak, I want to be able to hear you clearly. God, I don't want to have to second guess your voice. Because, you know, Sunday I explained this. Uh, all of us that had a father, and we're like, when the father is speaking, why would we be looking at him, Dad, is that you? <laughs> and and we, that would be foolish, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know your father. You know his voice. He can be in another room, but when he said, come here, boy, you know it was your dad. <laughs> Tell me, Dad, is that you? <laughs> you don't come, you're going to have some consequences. So how much more do God wants us as his sons, as his daughters, to know his voice when he speaks? 
We have to get to a place of brokenness. We got to get in Gethsemane to be pressed, to be squeezed out, and, and to experience true revival. My God, I'm getting happy by myself. We got to get a place, God, whatever junk, whatever soul food, <laughs> listen, whatever soul food that I've been feeding my, my flesh, God, I'm willing to let it go on the altar. And sometimes, listen, here at Overcomers in Christ, I give you the privilege. I give you the go-ahead. If the Holy Ghost is beckoning you to find a place on your knees doing the service, my God, forget about everybody and get to a place of Gethsemane yes. and get your breakthrough. Because Jesus says he began to feel the sorrow, the heaviness. And, and can I tell you why you got, can't nobody fall on the stone? But Jesus carried three of his inner circle friends. Come on, boys. I'm about to go down. They, Judas is coming after him. They bring the boys with him. He says, come on, Peter, James, John. Come on, man. I need you to come with me. And sometimes when we're looking for others for support, they somewhere snoozing. <laughs> You, don't you know how critical this thing is in my life? Don't you know I'm about to die and you got friends? Are, <laughs> look, they asking the question, what is that to us? Yeah, yeah. He, he, you, you read it in Matthew 26. He says, could not you stay awake for at least one hour? But when it comes to falling on the stone, you can't carry nobody with you. Oh, my God. And when you get in Gethsemane, Jesus was sweating, drops of blood. Uh, no, he, we had to, listen, he says, Father, listen, my humanity says I, I can't handle it. I'm going to be separate. Uh, I'm going to be separated from you. We've never been separated. Oh, my God. But his, his divine side, his divinity said, God, I know you've chosen me. And I want to do your will. I'm going to do it. But let me get my soul lined up. I, once I get this thing in, in lined up, God, let it happen. We got to pray that prayer. We have to understand God is talking to us in this season that we have the privilege of prayer. What does prayer do? Prayer is communicating to God. You got to catch this. Prayer is communicating with God. It's the vehicle that the Holy Spirit used to get our soul and our will under control. Mm -hmm. Pray it out. Fast it out. We got to communicate with God because it's a privilege, the privilege of prayer. It's the place of squeezing out, annihilating, and denouncing our will and the power to rule our own life. Do you know uh, when when we get to this place, our destiny, our eternal destiny is at stake. You do not want to gamble with your eternity. There's only two places to go. It's either heaven or hell. And you hear some foolish men and women, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to throw a party in hell. Can I tell you, that's a place of torment. Uh, it's going to be crying and gnashing of teeth. There will be no party in hell. The fire is never quenched. It will never go out. That is not a party to me. You can't stand 86 degrees now. What you going to do with eternal fire? Oh my God. 86 degrees, the AC not working, and you don't whoop, it's hot. <laughs> Amen. It's a place, look, it's a place where we are spirit-led and not soul control. Amen. See, when you come out of Gethsemane, you got to catch this. You either going to be under control of the Holy Ghost or Satan. When you get out of that place called Gethsemane, you got to either be spirit-led or under the influence of Satan. Amen. And just as Jesus submitted himself to the Father, we also have to have the priority of submission. Hallelujah. First, we have the privilege of prayer. Next, we have the priority of submission. Jesus had to get to a place. He says, Father, if this thing is possible, let this cup pass 
from me. But then here comes that long word, nevertheless. Amen. Not as I will, but as thy will. Amen. We must make our confession. This, this must be our mantra, our confession. God, not my will, but your will be done in my life. And when we yield to that, when we obey that, then God will say, okay, he has given me the right to come in and take over his life. Can I tell you, when the Holy Ghost comes in to take over our life, he will never lead you astray. Your, your life will always be the better for it when we're being led by the Spirit of God. Y'all know what the Bible says to them that became the son of We got to be led by the Spirit of God to become the sons of God as we allow the Spirit to lead us and to guide us. Amen. Because when we're led by the Spirit of God, Amen. We don't have time to play games on the side and gamble with our life. Not my will, oh God, but your will in my life. Amen. Amen. And so in, uh, in, in Gethsemane, just as Jesus submitted to the obedience of God, amen. We also, here's the third thing, we also must submit to the power of God. Obedience. Somebody said obedience. obedience. Amen. Because in order for God to have free reign in our life, we have to be willing to obey what he is telling us to do. Amen. And we got to be willing to submit to what God is requiring out of. It says in 1 Peter 1 and 22, Seeing ye have purified uh, your souls, in obeying the truth through the spirit, unfeigned love of the brethren, seeing that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. We pure our souls in obeying the truth. Obedience is a requirement. It's not a suggestion. Amen. And so many times we... We just want to rebel. We, the children of Israel's life would have been so much better if they would learn how to obey the voice of God. God was giving them direction. Go here, do this, and do this. And they said, we want, we want to do things our own way. We want our own king. We don't want uh, no pillar of, of fire. We don't want no cloud. We, we want our own king. We want to do it our way. And God says, okay, you want it your way? Let them have the way. Get them a king. And they told him, God told them what, what's going to happen. He's going to use your sons. He's going to get your daughters. He's going to do this. And they still, we don't care as long as we can get away from the king, Jesus Christ. And so today God is saying, listen, don't be stubborn. Ask God to break that stubbornness, that stiff neck, so that you can learn how to submit and be broken and come under the authority of the Holy Ghost. Can I ask you a question? Have you reached a breaking point? When you evaluate your life, when you look at the things that you have gotten yourself in, I'm talking about 2021, during this pandemic. This pandemic was a very good time when things were shut down and couldn't go places. We were limited where you could have nothing but time to evaluate. If I died tonight, where would I spend eternity? If God is calling me, if I'm hearing a call of God, have I reached a place, a place where I can say, God, I'm willing to go? And, and sometimes the devil trick our minds, uh, even the young people mind thinking you got to be at least 40 before you can get really saved. <laughs> While you're young, he like so oats, go to the parties and just act it all out. And I get the news, I get news uh, notifications. You'd be surprised, and I don't know who watches news constantly, you'd be surprised how many teens are killing one another that's not being reported on the news. The news would have to be five, six hours long if they, could, if they uh, really uh, talked about the teens killing, not just the old folks, it's 13, 14-year-olds are committing double, triple murders. 
You know why that's happened? Because the devil is trying to destroy as many mankind that will follow his lead. Because he knows he's going to be destroyed. And his mind said, the enemy, you got to catch this. I want to destroy as many people's lives as I possibly can. And God is saying, I have given you all that it takes to come with me, to spend eternity with me. And we still are looking. I want to go back with the devil. Something is wrong with our mind. And God said, the only way you can break out of that influence, that worldly influence, is to be broken. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. All of us will have a Gethsemane in our lives. I wonder what will you do when you, it's your turn to find your place in Gethsemane. You know, when you can tell when a person's praying and fasting and staying before God, they don't want no distractions. Yeah, you calling, you keep calling. If you calling somebody and the phone is not, they not answering, leave them alone. Come on, y'all. This is serious. somebody's life is at stake. You know, uh, but we always went out every other night. I, I'm not that. I'm, I'm, I'm past that now. I'm hungry and I'm thirsting for God. I, I know there's some things in me I don't like. I want to get rid of it. Some of my flesh. Uh, and I, I find my attitude when, when people say something uh, and I, I fly off too quick. No, I need to get broken, y'all. Excuse me, friend. Let me get to a place of brokenness. And if they are a true friend, they'll want to come along. Come on. I don't want I don't no, no, you're not leaving me behind. Now nah, we're going, <laughs> look, look, we getting to Gethsemane together. Amen. And that's true love when a sister and brother uh, and sisters and brothers are praying and interceding for one another because that, that shows that unity and submitting and obeying what God is doing. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, I have obeyed what you have told me to speak to your people, oh God. Father, I pray that there will be a brokenness in our soul, God, like never before, God, that we are not concerned about the, uh, what man thinks, what man is saying. We're letting pride go, God, so that our will can line up with your will, oh God. Father, I thank you now that you are producing in us, God, a willingness and a spirit of obedience. God, so that we can obey your will, oh God. Not grudgingly, but God with a cheerful heart, doing what you have called us to do and called us to become. And Father, I thank you for your word. It will accomplish that which it was sent out to do, and it shall not return void. And Father, I thank you, God, that you are hearing the cry of the righteous in this hour, in this season, oh God, here at Overcomers in Christ, God. God, we are hungry. We are thirsting, oh God. We're staying on the altar, God, until our soul is under control. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together. <laughs> Have you reached your breaking point? Amen. Let's do our benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Father, I thank you as we go the rest of the week, oh God, if you delay your coming and spare our lives. God, that we will find our place in Gethsemane. God, that we may be broken and be willing and obedient to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, to addition, somebody a high five. Amen. Tell them.